Southeast Radio's Business Matters with Carl Fitzpatrick. My next guest this morning, John O'Gorman, is the co-founder of the ASG Group and is also the co-author of the new book entitled The Growth Pit Stop. John, you recently published your latest book, The Growth Pit Stop, which you wrote with Ray Collis. But as well as collaborating with Ray to write this book, you're also business partners, having founded the ASG Group. That's right, Carl. We founded the ASG Group back in 2007 and have been on a journey over the past uh, number of years, hard to believe, nine years, nearly ten years, working with organisations across uh, multiple countries and multiple segments to help them uh, accelerate sustainable growth and drive performance in their business. Now, the term business consultant has been used very loosely in recent years, with many people with varying levels of expertise and success operating within this space. But the ASG Group differentiates themselves from traditional business consultants in four areas. Yeah, well, Carl, we, you know, this, this, uh, this question that we ask all our clients, the first question that we ask our clients in the first area is, is what percentage of their current growth potential is being exploited? So I'll repeat that question for your listeners. What percentage of your company's business, your company, business unit or team's growth potential is being exploited? It's a searching question. And it's one of the key areas where we start, the first key area we start with. Where are you now in terms of growth, performance and potential? The second area that we then focus on is uh, getting organizations to take some data, do some analysis of data on their performance and potential. And we've built out a predictive uh, analytics tool where teams go online, 26 minutes, they ask, ask, they're ask. asked 248 key questions, and that predictive analysis tool pinpoints key accelerators for growth. So that's the second area. The third area then is, has the organization and what we call got the pit team. So if you imagine a Formula One race car and they're pulled off the track, there's a pit team there to fine-tune the car and get the track car back out onto the track. We bring the same principle to business. Can an organization or business unit pit stop their strategy? to the team work together to effectively pit stop the strategy. And that's the, third, that's the third area. And the fourth key area then is what we call the pit lane. Has the organization got the performance mindset and has the team and the organization got the psychology of growth? And we work with people around the psychology of growth also. And is the group service directed towards the senior management team or is it more applicable for the sales function within an organization, John? Yeah, so we work, we work across uh, stakeholder groups, uh, primarily called in in the area of sales and marketing um, and alignment between sales and marketing and other functional areas. Um, but what we find and I, is, is sometimes the challenges of performance in sales and marketing require see other senior managers to, what we say, jump into the pit lane with the sales and marketing team to help make the, or, the, the revenue generating machine go faster. So it's a combination card. It's not just working with the sales and marketing team, but it, is, it, it generally starts there. Now I'm sure many of our listeners this morning that are in management positions or business owners will realise that within any business there's usually conflict between the operational side and the sales side. How do you resolve those issues within a team environment? Yeah, I think there's, there's, there's uh, you know, we, we use the metaphor of, of Formula One um, when we work with clients. And the reason we use that metaphor is because in Formula One, winning is very, very clear. It's laid out on the track. Um, the driver knows what winning is. The pit team knows what winning is. Um, everybody is clear what winning is. Um, in organizations, what we find is senior executives are, are well able to define what winning is at an organizational level in terms of metrics. Um, but one of the key challenges is getting um, linking those metrics to what winning means for team and what winning means for individuals. And if you can blend those three, winning at a personal level, winning at a team level, and winning at an organizational level, and get people talking about performance and winning with those three areas linked together, you'll see success. And I guess, you know, a very recent um, successful team in sport is, is, is obviously Connacht and Pat Lamb and what he's done down there and all, all the pundits and plaudits going to him and his team. But what he actually got done was he focused on at one stage what was winning for uh, the individuals um, and he talked about getting them to do PowerPoint presentations around what winning was for them as individuals um, in their pre-season. We get teams to do similar exercises of drawing out what winning is for them as individuals and for as a team and it can result in very, very powerful conversations and it can unlock uh, people and people's potential and team potential. What about when you walk into a company and you know that there's something seriously wrong with the culture within it? Is the only option to change the people? 
Um, I, I, I don't. I don't it's, it's, it's always it's always it's always one option. I think one of the key things is when when if 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 there's a if there's a lot of things broken, well, you need to go back to uh, to uh, step one, which is you know what is this organisation trying to achieve? What's the purpose for this organisation? And interestingly, and I don't know will your will your audience know much about Formula One, but one of the things that a lot of people don't know is the nose cone of a Formula One car can can be clipped on and clipped off, and we equate the nose cone of a Formula One car to strategy to care priorities, targets, and goals. Um, and sometimes you need to be able to clip off your, uh, metaphorically, your strategy and be able to review your targets, priorities, and goals. And once you've done that with clarity on where you're going, well, you, 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 build, you build from there. Um, and we like to get people to focus in on, you know, you can build out a team, but you've got to get everybody onto the same page in terms of what the principles of that team are. And in Formula One, the principles of the pit team all resolve around winning, speed, urgency, see time and commitment. Now the growth pit stop methodology has been developed both on scientific research and the psychological aspects of growth. Provide us with an insight into the research which underpins the credibility of the growth pit stop. Yeah, so this, this model has been uh, developed over eight years with 2,750 managers across 47 countries and 12 industries. It's built on the shoulders of research from the likes of Harvard, McKinsey, PwC and others. Methodology has been built in conjunction with managers from across the world and has blended in the science from these uh, leading organizations, both academic and uh, real-world consulting organizations. How does this differ from the traditional approach to strategy, John? Yeah, well, the, the, key dif- the key difference is around uh, what we call the metaphor and the model, and we call it more than a metaphor and more than a model, the meta model of Formula One. And we, everybody talks about performance, Carl, but what I would say is people are talking about performance, but they're using the wrong models. They're not using the next generation of model that's going to engage um, the, the younger managers that are required to drive out growth. And that's the key difference with this model. It's a, it's a metaphor and a model that can allow people uh, to access what uh, can sometimes be a complex subject around growth and strategy and performance, access it uh, with a, a, a new frame. I think one of the points you make within the book is that businesses too often focus on one particular aspect of the business, but they should take a more holistic approach to the business. Yeah, so we, 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 talk, about, uh, we talk about the idea of the pit lane, um, and the pit lane is, is where, where, every, where everything happens. And you've got, you can't just say, okay, listen, uh, it, our problem is around acquiring customers, because, you know, there may be a problem with the messaging, there may be a problem with the positioning, there may be a problem with who we're targeting. So you've got to, you've got to have everybody focused in on making your revenue generating machine go faster. And, you know, you can't, if you fix one part, it's going to have an effect on, a, on another part. And in Formula One and in, like in business, if you change one aspect uh, of the way your business functions, it's going to have an impact on others and it's recognising that, that every fine tune in your business is going to have a knock-on effect in another area. Now the starting point is with assessing the growth potential of the business itself. Talk me through that process, John. Traditionally in consulting engagements uh, a big consulting house or a smaller consulting organisation would, would go into an organisation spend up to 20, 30 days getting a view of where the organization was at. The difference with uh, the Grow Pit Stop model is that's done online with the predictive growth analytics. That's done in 26 minutes versus 26 days, uh, which is beneficial for the organization in terms of speed of getting to the point of where they need to focus their attentions. Now, multiple opportunities for growth might be identified, but it is then important to agree growth priorities. Should companies just focus on one opportunity at a time, or is it possible to develop a growth portfolio, John? I think it's impo- I think it's very possible to develop a, a portfolio of accelerators within businesses. Um, there's a, there's a very uh, um, well backed up research to suggest that uh, big organisations, medium sized organisations, they can all run their core business, but they can run accelerators or portfolio of opportunities alongside those businesses to drive out innovation, to drive out performance. My view would be, and our clients' views would be, um, and and this this applied over the past eight years has, has proven out that there's anywhere from seven to twenty five percent performance improvement can be identified using a portfolio approach to uh, to the uh, to, a key, to accelerators of growth. And what would you say to Zig Ziglar's quote about if you chase two rabbits you're bound to catch none? Well, I think my, my, my response to that would be this is all about uh, um, uh, continuous improvement and identifying a couple of opportunities. I'm not suggesting that you're going to go off and uh, pursue six, seven, eight, nine opportunities. I'm saying, you know, anywhere between his one and our and, and, and three. 
and you will have different unit, different groups of people working on those. Um, so I guess this has been proven out that in, in organisations um, that, that it can be done that way. So once the growth tactics have been identified and agreed upon, what factors need to be considered to ensure they're effectively implemented? I think this comes back to leadership, Carl. Um, we talk about uh, 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 good old Eddie Jordan. Um, every, your, your, uh, most of your listeners will be aware of Eddie Jordan. Uh, he's, a, he's one of the Formula One commentators, an Irish guy, who ran his own Formula One team. Nothing in Jordan racing um, went, uh, got approved without Eddie's, Eddie's approval. Um, it's the same in business. You've got to have a leader. Uh, you've got to have a leader who's fully bought into uh, the accelerators that have been chosen by the team. And they've got to be curious. They've got to support uh, the teams in in, uh, in enabling uh, the accelerators to uh, to be moved forward, uh, they've also play a role in, in coaching it and uh, coaching them. And uh, I like to talk about a term of leader. Leader, uh, the leader has to help um, his people become leaders also. Um, so that's one of the key parts of execution. In terms of motivating the staff involved right across the organisation, are you one for thinking that all staff should be incentivized financially? I believe that uh, financial incentives are important, but they're only one aspect of it. And, you know, interestingly enough, uh, we, I- in the book we talk about Maslow hierarchy of needs and one of the needs being that financial security. But there's a lot more to it. Once people have got the financial security again, there's proven data out there to show that people will do, uh, want to be empowered, want to look at things through their own eyes and work uh, on things that, that, are pa- that they are passionate about. So, yeah, financial incentives are obviously important but but they're only they only make up one aspect of it if you had one piece of advice to give to owner managers out there listening to this morning's show what would it be i think the one piece of advice would be to go back to the key question um, and continuously ask your, yourself the question what percentage of your company's full growth potential is being exploited at any one time and look to see how you can drive forward from there southeast radio's business matters with carl fitzpatrick